Welcome to the first Pimera project video. To briefly summarize, this is an application that can be used to create security and critter cameras for Raspberry Pis. I've written something similar already, but in Python 3. You can find the code here. Um, the reason why I'm revisiting this is the Raspberry Pi project is moving to libcamera away from the proprietary Broadcom camera stack to this open source project. They've already done a ton of work and they've replaced the old Raspi vid and Raspi still uh, capture apps with libcamera still and libcamera vid, I believe. And you know, all, all, all their friends. So they've done a ton of work already. You can read more on the actual camera docs themselves there. All right, and then given that they are changing, it seemed like a good time for me to reassess and a good time for me to switch to something else. Uh, one, for performance reasons, because I want to do more with the hardware. Uh, Loop Camera is a C++ library. So for me, being able to drop down to C and C++ so I can manage my own memory if I want to and just have more control over threading and concurrency seemed like a good way to go. As I said, the previous version was written in Python 3, and I feel like I squeezed all the performance I could out of that. I wanted to try for a bit more in C. Some guiding principles on this project. Uh, don't do unnecessary work, because um, these Raspberry Pis are low-power machines. I want that each camera node, uh, the goal is like, you would have a Raspberry Pi in a case with the camera, and they would be standalone nodes wherever you want them to be. And I want them to be resilient to network failures. So if, if you don't have connectivity for a bit, maybe you reboot your Wi-Fi router or are redoing your network or something else happens. I want them to still be able to record and detect motion. I don't want them reliant on a central server or a central processing system for normal operation. Uh, third principle is like I want to use the full capability of the hardware. These computers, they are tiny computers, have hardware encoders for H.264 video frames. I want to use that, which my previous version in Python did. I also want to be able to get 1080p and 30 frames per second. So Raspi still and libcamera still can record at that resolution and frame rate to H.264 files, I figured why can't, there should be enough power um, to spare for doing motion detection uh, and streaming to the browser as well. So that's my goal, is max it out as much as I can, you know, paying attention to heat, and I don't want any stutters due to operating system memory management or anything like that, so we've got to We've got to be careful with how we tune things. but So initially, the supported hardware will be Raspberry Pi 3B pluses and 4Bs. I have one of each of those. I guess there are other models in the 3 line, but I have not tested those, nor do I own them. And starting with, we just want to use the official Raspberry Pi camera modules because I know exactly what the resolutions are and the capabilities. I can easily test those. I think I have three of the mo those modules right now. Soon, I want to get back to support for Raspberry Pi Zeros. I do have a Zero W um, that ran a previous version of the Python app, or basically the Python version of this application. And it worked okay, but that's a single core machine, so we really, I really need to rethink the way I'm doing threading for that type of a device. Um, however, the Zero W is I don't know whether it's going to be supported uh, fully in the lib camera transition. We may have to keep using the old Broadcom stack, and I'm not sure, which means I'll be um, using some like sample code that use the ML library, which is Broadcom's library. So I may end up kind of porting that old code just for the Raspberry Pi Zero and other single core older machines that, that won't get lib camera support. 
but that's to be decided. So that's why I said soonish here, because I'm not exactly sure about my plans around those devices. The 02W is based on the 3 um, processor. I think most of that architecture, they ported it to 02W. So 02Ws would be basically the same as a 3B+, plus, which will be great. All right, as for features, um, the basic ones that you think of, you know, record when motion is detection, detected. Additionally, uh, the Python version and the new version will stream to the browser as MJPEG. That's a really easy way to stream frames continuously to the browser, and it looks like a movie, but it's really JPEG frames. There's a limit to that, of course, because JPEG is not as compressed as H.264 frames would be. So my plan now is to do two frames per second when, when watching in that way. There may be other ways I can stream in the future. I believe that WebRTC supports H.264, but that means I'll be creating a WebRTC server on these in this app that will run on the Raspberry Pis, and that just that seems a bit heavy, but we'll see. And of course, I need to encode and save to H.264 video whenever motion is detected. All right, as far as motion detection goes, we need to uh, tune a few things. So I want it to be tunable, so I want you to be able to, to change the detection frequency, like how often it looks for motion between frames. I found that once, or sorry, three times a second is a really good uh, frequency because people animals can't move that far in a third of a second vehicles sure they may they may flip way across the frame within that time frame but but people in it and animals uh, you can pick them up and then you can start recording what they're doing so I want you also to be able to tune the the threshold at which motion is actually detected like which percentage of pixels have to change before we flip the flag and say, hey, something moved here. You want to exclude a little bit because sometimes colors on cameras like flutter a little bit and, and shift around and it's a bit grainy. So you want to exclude some of that noise, but being able to tune that is helpful depending on what scene you're looking at, how much light you have in the scene that you're recording. You may need to make it a bit more forgiving and not record motion all the time if it's just um, you know, scene, just noise. And also thirdly, one of the most important things is region exclusion. Um, I'll show you an example of that in a bit of why you would need that. And let me see what my next slide is. Okay. So this is the architecture. I'm going to take a break here and I'll show you why you might need region exclusion. So this, my terribly thrown together UI to, to browse videos that I've recorded with my Raspberry Pis. So this one's looking out my back porch. And as you can see in this video, the air balloon is moving and the cat is moving. I'm pretty sure it detected the cat um, because I believe I have a region exclusion right about here. Uh, during a big part of the year, of the, the trees are full of leaves and they sway. So I don't want these to trigger motion. So basically this region here, which is intended to capture squirrels and birds, uh, this is what, if, if change happens in here, the camera will pick it up. I also exclude the flag since that blows as well. But yeah, that's why you want region exclusion. Depending on where you're looking at, you may be excluding trees or the shadows that the leaves and the trees cast on the ground when wind blows. It just, just depends on what you're what your scene has in it. All right. So the general architecture of this is we're going to set things up. And I'm using YUV 420 frame data for now. I kind of new to this space, so I'm trying to get things um, in a way that makes sense, but also is optimized. So one thing I learned recently is that YUV Using YUV input data to a JPEG encoder, again, we're going to be live streaming in MJPEG, so I'm using a JPEG encoder. If you feed it YUV420 data, you can skip one of the steps of most JPEG encoding algorithms, because in most cases, you'll be feeding JPEG encoders RGB data, 
And the first thing they do is convert it to something like YUV, which is kind of a grayscale thing, and then some other um, compressed uh, planes that I don't really understand much about. But again, this is more compressed than straight RGB pixel data from the camera. So that means we should um, leave plenty of bandwidth uh, in the, you know, the IO that goes on within the, the Raspberry Pi itself. So two, there's going to be a callback function. This is how LiveCamera works. Uh, you register a callback and you say, hey, I want you to give me frames. And when it has frame data to give you, it, it triggers your callback. And some things that need to happen in the callback are, I want to add a timestamp to the frame somehow, either as metadata or actually modifying the image. And then I want to add the frame to a processing queue because I want this callback to never get interrupted. And on Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s, we have multiple CPU cores to deal with. So this callback can continue to happen even if our processing thread is happening concurrently you know, on another CPU core. So we have that to take advantage of here. On Pi Zeros, not so much because they're single core machines. But again, we'll deal with that later. So on the processing thread, we'll be pulling a frame off the queue, checking whether there's any people that want to watch the live stream, and in which case we'll send them every 500 milliseconds, twice a second, We'll encode it as MJPEG and send that to their browsers, whoever's watching. I found that using LibJPEG Turbo, I believe is the right name of that library, whatever the most popular one is and whichever one does the SIMD instructions based on your architecture, that can encode my 1080p frames in around 130 milliseconds. So I can't do 10 frames per second so I'm, that's why I'm right now I'm choosing two frames per second to send to streamers. Okay. The uh, third thing the thread will do is check for motion every 300 milliseconds. Again, this is what I was talking about, where people and, and animals don't move that quickly. Um, so checking three times a second should be sufficient to detect their motion and then start recording. And then we're going to, you know, if motion is detected, we'll... We'll set a stop recording cutoff. And then if we're supposed to be recording and saving, I need to send the data to a hardware encoder. And that's going to be a video for Linux device. Um, the Raspberry Pi uh, Lib Camera Apps repo already has some sample code for doing that. So I'll be learning from what they've done uh, very heavily. And this will likely happen in a separate thread, the actual encoding and saving to file. So that will probably be another queue that I have to work into my architecture, which is fine. Okay, in my next videos, I'll be actually showing some code on how to use LibCamera. I had to stumble a bit through the LibCamera docs, the Getting Started Developer Guide docs, to piece together some scaffolding code that basically just requests frames from the camera and doesn't do anything with them. Just get the callback loop working, and that's it. So I'll be showing that. And eventually I'll show how to control frame rate because it's a little quirky, and formats and that sort of thing. And in other videos, I want to go through the actual Pimera code that I have right now. So the current state is I have that single processing thread, and then the main thread. And I'll show you what I have so far, and then we'll continue to code it out and build it out. And the next steps that I, that I want to work on is to um, port over my motion detection and region exclusion logic and see how it functions. Basically looping over pixels and excluding certain ones from the, um, you know, the, the change detection algorithm if it's within a region that we don't, don't care about, that sort of thing. And later, once I figure out the H.264 encoding with the V4L device, I'll be showing that too. All right, I think that's enough for now. I will see you next time.